What's going on YouTube? I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video where I kind of dived into how my first session of the week went. Again, this is another diary entry. So we're on day three now, it is Wednesday in Sydney and I'm just a couple of days out from competition. So as I mentioned yesterday, my session that I did on the Tuesday before my competition day was mainly focused around either doing powers or squats. Now I trained quite late in the day, so I didn't really feel like doing the power snatches and power cleans yesterday. And because I did a classical lift on Monday, I thought it'd be absolutely fine um, to just stick with doing the squats yesterday. Like I said to you previously in the week, it doesn't matter so much about the amount of work that you do. And more than anything, it's about the work that you're doing being really quality in the lead up to the competition day. Doing extra training when you're not really feeling 100% or struggling um, with fatigue isn't going to add to your performance on the competition day. So doing something simple and getting in and out of the gym nice and quickly was really important. I mentioned yesterday for my squat session that I was going to take all the volume out of the session, which is really important, like I said, so that you don't feel that fatigue later on in the week, but equally still keeping the intensity high. And what I mean by intensity is the weight high so that you're actually working on feeling the load in which you'll potentially be cleaning in the competition day. So for me, like I said to you, I'd be really happy if I managed to do 185 kilos on Saturday as my kind of final lift. So what I did is I worked up to 190 kilo front squat. I did three singles at that weight and a couple of the things I was really focusing on when I was doing the front squat at this weight, which is like 32 kilos off my PB, was to spend time with the bar loaded in my front rack position and getting comfortable with that at the top of the lift. But also, as I was controlling the descent and driving through the sticking point, I was spending a little bit more time at the top of the lift. So as you know, when you come out of a heavy clean, especially in competition, one of the things that you'll tend to feel is the need to rush the jerk process. So one thing for me when I'm in, the comp in that competition set is to make sure I'm spending enough time with the bar racked on my shoulders and actually breathing and feeling comfortable for going into the jerk. So by spending a little bit more time when I was doing the front squat yesterday, just to feel that load and that weight racked in my front rack position as though I'm setting for my jerk, got me comfortable with feeling that weight on the shoulders. So that's a really good technique to use, especially on that front squat session before the competition. Now, in addition to that, when it comes to the competition day and you're feeling the need to rush from the clean into the jerk on those heavier singles, one thing that I love to do is to count myself in when I'm on the shoulders. So what I do is as I come out the clean and I'm starting to think, damn, I'm not gonna be able to get this over my head. What I do is I start counting down from three. I go three, two, one. I breathe to get the oxygen in. And by the time I get to about two and a half seconds, I'm like, okay, this isn't so heavy. So that then allows me to make sure that I take my time with the dip of the jerk and let the weight of the bar come down with me before I drive through the bar. Commonly when you're lifting above 150 kilos on a 20 kilo bar, the bar will start to whip. So it's really important that you're keeping the control in that dip phase so that the whole load comes down with you so that you can drive through the bar. So that's just a tip for you to think about and start processing this many days out before you get to the competition about the time that you're gonna be taking on the shoulders into the jerk. And that's definitely something that I'm starting to think about. Now, in terms of my nutrition yesterday, um, my body weight came down nicely. I was 96.3 this morning. So like I said to you, I kind of wanted to compete at 96 because that's kind of what would be my new weight category. So I'm there or thereabouts in the weight category that I need to be. So what I did from a nutrition standpoint is I ate the exact same things as what I did the day before. But what I found later on in the day was that I got hungry. So I actually added in a secondary um, meal more than I would normally have, just so that I wasn't going to bed hungry. I felt a little bit fatigued after the training session that I did yesterday. So sometimes it's more valuable that you actually have the right nutrition that you need to recover, even if that means that you put a little bit more on weight wise over the night before a few days out. On a day where you're not training, so today's probably gonna be my rest day, uh, I'll be a little bit more careful with what I'm eating and not have any excessive meals. So that's just really something to manage, like I said, with the body weight and the nutrition on the days leading up to the competition. Now, with regards to the competition day, one of the key things that I'm starting to do from a mental side of things now, as we're a few days out from the comp, is starting to visualize the numbers that I want to be hitting on that given day. 
So as I mentioned to you, I'm reinforcing the fact that I wanna open on that 135, then go 140 and then 145, and then on the clean and jerk, 175, 180, 185. The one thing that's really important to remember in the kind of the way that you approach the competition from a mindset standpoint is you have to earn the right to hit that final number, the 145. So the importance is still equally just on hitting your first lift and making that successful before actually worrying about the end result. If you make a missed lift, like for example, if I open or I miss my lift, I'm gonna lose my opportunity to get to go for that 145 because I'm gonna have to repeat that weight before I move up. So that's something to always remember, focusing on the first lift being just as important on the last. And if you nail your first two lifts, you'll get the right to hit that final lift that you wanna get on the deck. Now, one thing that I would always say in competition, as great as it is having a plan going into it, a lot of things on the day, especially if you're close with your competitors, can affect the outcome. If you're not prepared mentally for the fact that your final lift could maybe have to be a couple kilos heavier or a couple kilos lighter than what you intended to hit because you need to place, that's really important to prioritize the placing over the weight that you want. That's part of competition, okay? Now, I think going into today in terms of how I'm feeling from a training point of view is a rest day. Now, even if you feel fine on a rest day and you feel like, oh, I just wanna go in and do something for the sake of doing something, don't. Focus on feeling recovered, limiting the amount of movement that you're doing on this day, three days out from the competition, as just as important as the time that you spend in the gym. Now, one thing that I also wanted to mention to you that I did today was I booked my accommodation and my flights. It's really important to have your flights and your accommodation kind of planned for the competition day prior to actually getting there. If you don't know that you're going to be sleeping in a comfortable bed or your your whether your flight's going to arrive in time, that adds added stress to the competition day that you don't need. So it always helps to arrive a day prior to the competition just in the case that, for example, your car breaks down or um, the flight doesn't take off, is really going to add stress, like I said today. So arriving that day before is really crucial. In addition to that, making sure that you book somewhere that's close to your venue or close to where you're going to be competing so you don't have to travel too far. And of course, having a comfortable bed. If you're used to your sleeping environment that you have at home and then you go and stay in a crappy hotel or something that's not like how you would normally sleep in terms of quality of bed, etc. that will affect your day. So it's really important to put yourself somewhere that you're gonna be comfortable and close to competition. That little bit more money that you may spend in a hotel could result in you actually having a better performance on the day. Now, in addition to this, packing of the kit. That's something that I'll start to do this evening, so three days out from my competition. I wanna make sure that all my kit is washed. I have the same tape that I'm normally used to. Um, I have a backup lifting suit um, just in case it rips which happened to me at the olympics um, and everything else i'd potentially want on the day that also comes down to things that you're used to having in training from a nutritional point standpoint when you're going for a heavy lift so think about your jelly sweets that you like your energy drinks get all that now so that you've got it that's one less thing to worry about on the final day it also means if you've washed and packed your kit three days out, should there be anything that's wrong with your kit or you don't, can't find something, you have that extra day before you travel to get that all sorted. So that's something that's gonna be on my mind today to get sorted so that, again, nothing to worry about later on in the week. Other than that, that's kind of the key thought processes for me three days out from the competition. I'm happy with my body weight. Last squat session went really good. Today's gonna to be all about resting and recovering. And then finally, books and accom uh, hotel accommodation and bag pack tonight so that I'm ready for those final two days leading in. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be talking a little bit more about competition strategy and how that competition day looks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. If you haven't seen the previous videos, go back and watch them because I'll be kind of, like I said, giving you my step-by-step -step day process into how I'm preparing for this competition.